Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I've always been curious about license plates and why they look the way they do. I'm originally from the state of Washington and I kind of liked our standard license plates, even if nostalgia plays some role in me actually liking them. Now I live in California and to be honest, our license plate kind of sucks. It's really basic and gives off no sense of California. You could easily swap out the cursive lettering for another state's name and the license plate would still work. So after constantly seeing these license plates in my state, it got me wondering, why are license plates so ugly? Sure, there are some okay looking license plates, but for the most part, they're boring, plain, and really poorly designed. So why? This takes us back to when license plates were first being used in the United States. Massachusetts was the first state to enforce the usage of license plates in 1903. In the next couple of decades, nearly every state had them. Way back then, most of the license plates were made from rubber, porcelain, iron, or leather. These didn't last long, both in terms of durability and popularity, and the switch to metal plates was undertaken. These metallic plates featured embossing, which raised the letters and numbers of the plate's serial code. Fast forward to World War II and there was a metal shortage in the US as supplies were diverted to the war effort. Alternative plates were made using fiberboard, cardboard, and soybean based plastic. With the exception of this World War II period, most license plates in the US have been made of metal with the typical embossed code. Even if the code isn't embossed, the color is painted directly onto the metal to show the code itself and to display the license plate's actual design. In 1971, the corporation 3M introduced high intensity grade reflective sheeting, which allowed for better visibility of these license plates, especially in the dark and in stormy conditions. When looking at 3M's website, they describe this reflective sheeting as, uh, their page doesn't exist. Turns out most of their website's links are like this, so it was kind of hard to find actual information on the sheeting. Anyway, the point is that this reflective sheeting improves the visibility of the plates. 3M also recently introduced infrared integration into the plates they produce, which essentially provides contrast between the serial code and background at the infrared level not just the visible light spectrum level. This helps cameras that read license plates, not just the human eye. So with all that being laid out, the actual materials that the plates are made of don't seem to be the issue. There actually seems to be a lot of flexibility in terms of design, especially since 3M says they can tailor your design to their infrared and reflective capabilities. The reason license plates are bad most likely boils down to two things. First, less paint and complexity on one's plate means it's easier and cheaper to produce and second, it's honestly just sucky design. The rest of the video isn't going to be completely objective, partly because opinion on design is inherently subjective, and partly because there isn't actually a lot of information about license plate history and their design. That being said, let's look at some of the current design elements and how they fall short, then look at how we can improve them. While I was doing my research, I found this really cool project called the States Plates Project. It basically brought together a ton of graphic designers and they redesigned each state's license plate. Their end results were actually really beautiful, but before I get to that, I want to cover the goals of a license plate. I had outlined these goals myself before stumbling upon the state's plates project, and our goals actually have significant overlap. The first goal is the most obvious one. A license plate should identify a location and provide a serial code for the vehicle in question. The second goal is that a plate should represent and encapsulate a state's pride, essence, and or history. The third and final goal is that the plate should be unique to the state in question, meaning it cannot be interchangeable with another state's license plate. To explain this, take a look at Maryland, for example. You could use a crab as a central piece of your license plate, but that could also apply to a lot of southern states. If you swapped out the lettering and wrote the state of Louisiana, it would still work. The license plate thus must be unique and distinguishable to the state in question. With those goals in mind, let's look at some current plates. Here's Connecticut, pretty basic with a light gradient on the back. It says the state's nickname, which is a cool feature, but it doesn't really tell you about Connecticut. You could again swap out the name and nickname and slot in any other state. Michigan has several standard license plates and here's one of them. There's just a lot going on in this plate and the skyline at the top seems weird. It should probably be grounded at the bottom. Fitting the state's shape in the middle is a cool idea, but the state is just too big and some of it is covered by the serial code. Also, the state's odd shape probably means it should be left out of the center of the plate. It could perhaps be more fittingly placed at one of the corners. I actually really like the simplicity of the New Mexico license plate with the cool centerpiece and appealing yet applicable colors, and honestly, this one I would leave as is. 
Lastly, the Texas license plate isn't all that bad. As you've probably noticed, I'm not a big fan of gradients, especially partial ones or ones contrasting something else. The state in the middle with the flag is a nice touch, serving as a dash, and the bottom showing several key features of the state is also really nice. Okay, so we've looked at a few states. Now let's look at their redesigned counterparts. These come from the state's plates project I mentioned earlier. Connecticut's new design is much cleaner, and the designer added that he wanted the colors to offer a working class feel, which I would say they accomplish. The grapevine refers to Connecticut's flag, and the old nickname seems a little more stylish than Constitution State, especially considering that that nickname actually refers to the fundamental orders, not the actual US Constitution. Michigan's new license plate is much more cleaned up, focusing specifically on its history with the auto industry. The background color scheme is actually really nice and much better than the weird skyline and gradients of the current one. Honestly, New Mexico's new one is just as good as the current one, so kudos to New Mexico for having great license plates. Texas's new plate has some colors reminiscent of the state and the Wild West feel. I like the lone star in the middle and the simple font. It would have been nice to see the red, white, and blue of their flag somewhere on there or the state's iconic shape, but this new plate gets the job done. There isn't a right way to design a license plate. There doesn't even have to be a design. It can be a simple black lettering with a plain colored background similar to the plates in Europe. But a license plate provides a creative medium for transmitting some sort of art art that is representative of the person driving that vehicle and the state that that person belongs to. In the same way the numbers identify the vehicle, maybe the art acts as some sort of identifier too. So it isn't necessary to have a design plate, but it helps convey a sense of meaning and pride. And at their most basic level, they're nice things to look at while driving.